It's Saturday evening, February 17th, and we find ourselves once again in the middle of a very active storm pattern here. And even though it's about to happen over the next couple of days, is not going to be as impactful as the storms that came through here back around February 9th. This is still going to be a pretty wet Sunday through Wednesday for us. So I just want to give you the latest details on how this is all going to play out. There's two storms you can see on here right away. Here's the one coming in on Saturday. This is the one you are living through and have lived through already. That's the one coming for Sunday through perhaps Wednesday. That's the one we're going to spend the majority of this visit talking about and getting you ready for. And you can see when we look at these systems on the big picture, look at that long tail right there. And this one's going to do the same thing. They're both feeding on atmospheric rivers, although these are not terribly intense atmospheric rivers. And I'll explain more when we get there. But I just wanted you to see that that's part of this system and the one coming in on Sunday. That's what the radar looked like as we went through the late afternoon on Saturday. It's pretty busy. No doubt you got your fair share of rain. We'll look at totals in a second. But here's what comes through the remainder of this first storm. We're going to watch the Saturday night storm fizzle out, really, by the time we get towards the evening. And there won't be a whole lot left to this. So when we look ahead to Sunday, there might still be a few stragglers that show up. Watch the North Bay. Maybe a few light showers show up there as we go through the late hours on Saturday. And we could see that into the very earliest morning hours of Sunday, but there wouldn't be much to that. So really, we're mostly done with this Saturday system. And if we look at rainfall totals, as usual, we picked up much bigger amounts in the North Bay. We're gonna get, uh, when it's all said and done, with about a half an inch, three quarters of an inch of rain for North Bay communities. And when we look at, um, from the city, peninsula and south, you can see the numbers here are around a quarter to a half an inch of rain. We did get enough from this that there are some flooding concerns through coastal Sonoma County. So there's already been a flood advisory issued through Saturday evening. It's going to expire as we go through Saturday evening. But the heavier amounts of rain you can see falling up here, those oranges up there, show you we're, we're getting into more like two inches. But that's in the coastal hills. That's all got to run downstream towards the coast. So the National Weather Service on Saturday evening did issue a short-term flood advisory for coastal parts of Sonoma County. But that was really the only concern from a rainfall and flooding standpoint from this storm. Let's move on. Let's get to the second one, because there are a lot of details to discuss in terms of that second one. First, we'll time it out. We are going to get a nice little break. We get rid of Saturdays. There's your opening. And then the next one comes in like second half of Sunday. And you can see what it does here. It just kind of lingers. Let's come back and play that again. Here's a little more detail on it. Time frame. That's Sunday at sunrise. We're still in our break. There's the leading edge of the next system. Let's bring that on shore. And we can see that first wave of rain gets here by the time we get into the early afternoon on Sunday. And that'll be some of the more widespread steady rain. And by no doubt, at this point, you're probably familiar with the way these storms go. You get your first wave on the leading edge here where you get your widespread steady rain. And then on the back edge of it, you get the follow up, which is the isolated pop up, hit and miss, scattered showers with occasional thunderstorms. It's exactly how this one's gonna go. So we'll take that first edge of it and let that play through Sunday. And now we've gone all the way from Sunday late afternoon. This is now Sunday evening. We're still right in the thick of that first phase. This is still that widespread steady rain, which you can really think of the entire second half of Sunday. Uh, being under the influence of that. So you got to plan on widespread city rain pretty much throughout the entire second half of Sunday. But then as we get into Monday, a very different character takes over. You see how you can even pick out the circulation in this? A little comma there, almost like a little swirly cinnamon roll. That's the center of the system. That's the area of low pressure. This is where the instability lives. In other words, where the energy is to really force the excitement in the atmosphere thunderstorms, occasional isolated thunderstorms, some brief downpours. And when we look at that, this might be one of the more impactful parts of this storm because now we're looking at Monday morning and you're seeing more intensity here. In other words, you're seeing a lot more oranges and reds showing up on the fu uh, future cast depiction of radar and these well-organized lines. These are convective lines of brief downpours. And we can see that come through Monday morning right through the commute on Monday at this point. This now gets us into Monday afternoon and we've got one slashing right through the heart of the bay perhaps coming right over the city, not that it happens exactly at that location at exactly that time. The takeaway from this is Monday, the character of the storm changes. And it, it could be a little bit more impressive if you happen to be one of the locations that gets one of these isolated thunderstorms right over you. 
Now, the locations that are more likely to really see that is actually the Central Valley, and that's why we're paused right here. Take a look at the time frame there. This is Monday afternoon. Look at that little notch of a V. This is typically the signature you'd see on radar or using high resolution, high resolution future cast depiction of it like that, where you get that kind of notch where there's a lot of energy, some pretty intense thunderstorms. These are the kind of thunderstorms that can take on rotation of their own, where the thunderstorm starts to take on rotation. Um, and then those are also the kinds of thunderstorms that have the potential to drop funnel clouds or even weak tornadoes. And don't be fooled, that happens in California. Uh, if you followed along, you no doubt know that already. And we shouldn't be taken too off guard, especially in the months of February and March. This is the most likely time of year, just because of the way these storms are typically built as we're kind of heading towards later winter and almost about to transition towards spring. There's more ingredients to give to these storms for more of that convective instability. And it, this would be one of the more likely days where people could potentially see a funnel cloud over the Central Valley. And I only tell you that because it does paint a picture here at home. The, there's a better chance there, but we have a small chance here. Uh, and these are never overwhelmingly destructive for us when they form EF zeros, EF ones. It's typically about as bad as they get. And those are the kind that usually make big headlines, but unless they happen immediately right on someone's house, which, which the odds of that are fairly low just because of the space, uh, they're really just more dramatic pictures. And even if they did come near someone's house, usually it's tiles get blown off roofs and it, it's a big exciting story, but um, that would probably be the extent of it. However, it's still a situation we all need to stay very much aware of as we go into Monday. And you can see the nature of this is still that way on Tuesday. Tuesday, it's all still here. There might be a bit less of it, but on Tuesday, we're still looking at isolated showers, occasional thunderstorms, some of them quite intense. And that actually goes into Wednesday. That forecast model wouldn't take us that long. But looking at the other long range forecast models, there's a lingering possibility for those still on Wednesday, but Monday and Tuesday are really primarily the days. So the rainfall totals from all of this are pretty high, but they're not excessively high. They're not overwhelming. Over that whole time frame, from Sunday through Tuesday, it's about two inches in the North Bay. So if you spread that out over three days, that's fairly manageable. And keep in mind, the overwhelming majority of that rainfall is actually coming on the second half of Sunday because the scattered showers, the isolated thunderstorms, don't fit in well when you look at a future cast like this. Those are gonna be real localized downpours. So the numbers you're seeing depicted here more than anything else are really telling you how much rain is coming on the second half of Sunday. So in that case, that is a little bit more of a condensed time, which means there is a slightly elevated flood concern to that. Again, it's not overwhelming. This is not a huge flood threat for us. But it is a flood concern nonetheless, and that's why the National Weather Service has put out a flood watch for uh, not only the Bay Area, but pretty much all of Northern California, except the mountains. They've got their own issues. We'll get to the snow in a second. But look at the time frame. Sunday morning through Wednesday at 10. But the real period of concern there would be Sunday night into Monday morning. Those are the two time frames to be thinking of the most from a flood concern. And then Monday afternoon, it would be the follow-up isolated on again scattered thunderstorms, occasional brief downpours. Uh, and those would be the concerns taking us into Monday. From a flooding standpoint, there are two poster children that what we think about when we come to flooding in the bay. There's the Russian River through Guerneville, and we can look at the forecast now for what that river is most likely to do after all that rain falls. You can see the days and the times go along the bottom here. The black line is the deterministic forecast. That's the specific forecast on here. But everything else on there is showing you what the range of possibilities are, and it's color-coded. When you get into purple, that's telling you there's a 20% chance you could get that high. So that's a low bet, but you can see that 20% chance does get you up to flood monitor or flood stage. So, could happen, but it's not the most likely outcome. So again, not a huge concern from a flooding standpoint. The other river would be the San Lorenzo River in the Santa Cruz Mountains. And this is helpful because we're looking at both extremes of the Bay Area. So we looked at the Russian River as our North Bay representative, and the San Lorenzo is the most probably uh, notorious one to watch down in the Santa Cruz Mountains. This one, the ensembles are pretty much telling the same story. 20% chance you could get to flood concern on that one. So it's there, but it's fairly low odds. 
Okay, that covers the rain, the flood concerns, and the thunderstorms. There is one other important item from Sunday's storm that we have to discuss. That's the wind, because it does look a little more impressive from a wind standpoint now than it did even yesterday. So a little bit of background on why that is and where we might get with this. But I'll preface it all by saying this is not going to be as windy as that storm that came through around February 9th. We're not going to get anywhere near that intensity. But, that, I mean, that was a really rare event. This is still going to bring some pretty good wind of its own. So here's the way this will play out. This is the Sunday storm. When you visualize it in the wind fields, it looks really cool. It looks ominous. This is not a hurricane. We're just looking at the wind fields on here. You can see the center of the area of low pressure there. So everything, obviously, spinning counterclockwise with that storm. The deeper the purple, the stronger the wind. And when we take a look at the leading edge here, we're experiencing kind of the cold front out on the edge of it. And that's different. Because what we experienced on February 9th was this stuff. Because the center of the low developed rapidly right off the coast. It was a bomb cyclone, and it was very intense for us because it was so close to home. This one's not doing that. This one's going to develop safely away from the coast. Having said that, we're still going to feel this band out here. We're going to come in for a closer look at that in a second. And then there's another band we're going to feel as well. So let's bring it back. And let's go to that time frame where we've got that van sitting right off the coast. This is the first little hit from wind. And the timing on that is Sunday through the late morning into the early afternoon. We've got it at 1 o'clock. Look at that line there where you've got your bands of purple safely still safely off the coast, but still a little too close for comfort. Those are 50 mile an hour gusts not far off the coast. And that's about as close as that's going to get to us. Let's see what that means for wind speeds here at home. We'll take it and we'll play it back and we'll just watch how the wind progresses throughout Sunday morning. So I've taken us back a few hours before it all kind of sets on. Here we are through that time frame. You can see the winds picking up there at 1130. The winds start to pick up for everybody else, but it shouldn't be terrible. If it's 50 miles an hour off the coast, we'll probably get about 30 or 40 mile an hour wind gusts from that. So there's a wind advisory as we go into Sunday morning from that. Uh, but it, that's about as bad as it's going to get. And that still brings its concerns. We could still get some downed trees with that. But nobody's going to get the 50-mile-an-hour gust that we had back on February 9th. But there's a second little phase of the wind that will come in after that one. There was a break, if you saw that in there, that took us through, like, Sunday night. And then by the time we get to Monday morning, another second little wave of wind right here is going to come through. And that one's going to pick up the wind speeds, and we'll see gusts to 40 or 45 along the coast. This might be the more impactful time frame from the winds, especially along the coast or in the hills along the peninsula. That's where we could see the 40-mile-an-hour gust. It's possible in a scenario like that, in fact, it's probably likely, we'll have a few more down trees through some of the higher elevations. And that could likely lead to some power outages. But it will not be on the scale that the February 9th storm was. That was much more widespread. This one should stay more localized. But just a heads up on that, as we get into Monday morning, we're likely going to have another round of strong enough wind to probably take some trees down, particularly along the peninsula, Santa Cruz Mountains, coast side, those locations. There's the wind advisory. Starts Sunday morning, goes through Tuesday, and all of those things on there we've covered from it. And you can see how the storm's put together. We're back now to looking at them both on Saturday night. You can see it in the satellite, that cloud structure reaching down to the south. What you couldn't see was the jet stream, which is racing into the south of it. The storm that we're going to get on Sunday sits right in there. In fact, let's visualize that once again. It's going to cut itself off from that jet stream. In other words, most storms come in on the jet stream, and they keep going with the jet stream. This one gets itself wound up so tightly, it cuts itself off, and then it loses all direction and motivation and sits here. This is why it's going to be around potentially through Wednesday. It's the duration of that storm, which is an important factor in it, because we're going to have it around for three days, even if the wettest time is going to be Sunday night and the windiest time is going to be Monday morning, you've still got the isolated and scattered thunderstorms that go along with it. And yes, just to clarify, there are atmospheric rivers feeding into these. There's the one for Saturday. And then you can see how that next system pulls it back in, and we get another one that comes in for the Sunday storm. But they're not terribly overwhelming atmospheric rivers. If you look at the forecast on this from the Scripps Institute, they're the ones who categorize and label atmospheric rivers. Best way to gauge how strong this is going to be, there's a time scale down there. This is the forecast for it. Let's just pull that out and take a look at it a little bigger, kind of make that clearer. Sunday and Monday are highlighted down there. This shows you when that strongest concentration, that highest concentration of water vapor and wind speed 
driving it all along, is going to get to San Francisco. And I know it's small, but there's a little locator on there to show you that I set this for San Francisco. We're in the green. That's a Category 2 atmospheric river. Category 2 is fairly weak. It goes to five, and a category two can be a balance of beneficial and hazardous. So we've already seen all the details from that, but just a little background on that. It's a little too warm to be a great snow producer. So on Saturday, we really didn't get a whole lot even up at the higher elevations, and snow level was at 6,000 feet. That's a theme. Snow level is going to stay at 6,000 feet with the next storm. And for reference, that's lake level. That's where Lake Tahoe sits. So maybe we do get some snow down to lake level, but not very far down I-80 or Highway 50. Here comes the Sunday storm. Looks like a better snow producer because it'll be around longer. It's the duration that really enables that storm to produce much more snow. It's not going to be easy travel up there. There will be windows where you can time it to get up there. Early Sunday would be your best bet because by late Sunday into Monday, it's going to get messy up there. So if you're going, you got to get over 80 or 50. You got Big holiday plans up there. The travel window is crucially important. The easiest time to make this drive is going to be the first half of Sunday. We're going to be watching this closely over the next few days. Of course, we'll be updating it on all of our newscasts on KPIX and PIX Plus over the next several days. And you can always catch us on the stream. And we'll try and get another one of these up as well to go a little more in-depth here on YouTube. Thanks for checking in.